there is no rest for the wicked which means gwen 3 team and myself they are not stopping releasing the models and i am not going to stop covering them in this video i am going to cover locally their newly released gwen 3 4 billion thinking model which is not only quite agentic but also supports tool calls with a long context the context window is around 256k so that it could process very very long inputs and as i said it is primarily optimized for agentic workflows this is fahad mirza and i welcome you to the channel please like the video and subscribe to the channel and if you are interested in other quen3 family of models then just search my channel and you should be able to good to go with all the flavors all the variants and tooling around it now this new model is quite interesting i will kick off the installation and then i will talk about one of the aspect which i think we all are ignoring not about these quen3 models but open ai's open weights models too which we already have covered yesterday so i'm going to use this ubuntu system i have one gpu card and vdr rtx a6000 with 48 gpu of vram i am going to use this vllm tool to serve this model locally so i'm going to start it out and if you're looking to rent a gpu or vm on very affordable prices you can find the link to mass compute in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50 percent for range of gpus and make sure that you have the latest version of vllm installed again if you don't know what vllm is then just go to my channel search with vllm and you should be able to install it in no time it's quite easy and i have covered it in various videos it's one of the fastest inference engine which can scale pretty quickly okay so let's wait for this model to get installed and then we will go from there and it is getting downloaded so as i was saying around the point which we all are missing is around hybrid model hybrid model simply means that the model which you can use in a thinking and non-thinking mode this model is not considered a hybrid model by the way because it is explicitly trained for both distinct uh, you know it can only do reasoning that's it but the other Quen3 models and even the open AI weight models you can use either for reasoning or non-reasoning. There are ways that you can even use this model for a non-reasoning task. But the thing is that this contrast can um, have some problems because at the end of the day they are using the same sort of backend. Now reasoning is an integral always on component of this model's design even if the effort level can be adjusted like low medium high this contrast with a true hybrid approach where a single model is toggled between fundamentally different operational modes which uh, i think can degrade some performance in some cases uh, for few models yes i am putting in a lot of conditions here because it varies from model to model and that is where the quality makes difference and that is where i think openai has done a wonderful job because they have balanced this fine thread so nicely in their new gpt ss model that when you toggle between these modes it really feels quite good whereas quen3 models they have not this one the other ones which we have covered on the channel they also do it quite nicely but i think that is where openai has done better but again, this is an ongoing thing. I'm more than sure that not only Quen team, but also labs are also going to compete in a very, very neck to neck way. Okay, so our VLLM has failed, as you can see, but there is no need to worry. I'll tell you what has happened here. I'll just scroll up in real time without editing anything. So you see, it is giving me the error about context length that this context length because I didn't specify any context length in my VLLM prompt. So it is complaining about that. The KV cache, which maintains the whole history of our uh, inference in simple words, it was unable to fit into this. So I need to decrease it. You see, it has also given us this number. So I'm just going to go with the lower number, which it has provided. So I'm just going to add this 
uh, max model length to whatever number they provided and you can even go a little bit lower so that just to give it a bit of a room now this should work finally so let's wait and you can see that it is using just over 7 gig of vram and there you go the model is being now served i'm going to start my open web ui so that we could play around with this model in the gui and again you can watch that same video the vllm1 in order to get this installed so let's access it in the browser i'm just going to specify localhost at port 3000 and the model is loaded let's try it out so first up i'm asking it a satellite is in a circular orbit around earth at an altitude of 1200 kilometer using the principles of orbital mechanics calculate its orbital period in minutes after your calculation discuss how this period would change if the satellite were instead placed in an orbit around mars at the same altitude and then it needs to provide a qualitative explanation let's check it out there was only thinking mode and then it is understanding the problem and then going about it so in a usual fashion of country and also other reasoning models it has come up with its own plan its own equation and it has just started following that tangent it is also self-reflecting and then it is pausing that look wait it is checking another equation another values another alternative here and then it is approximating some values just to see if that works or not so even without reaching to a definite conclusion it also works on approximations and that is what this question is all about it is open-ended and i think it is doing quite well at the moment and remember just 4 billion parameter of size that's it and look at look at the quality so it is thinking i think this seems like a, a scaled one because taking thinking you know taking a bit of a time for thinking which is fine let's wait so this question does require some profound thinking anyway i will let it think and then i will tell you how long did it take so it has thought for around three minutes and then it is also doing the recapping which is quite good and i can already tell you the answer is correct but let's check it out so thinking finished and then this is the equation which it has settled on where it is also explaining the equation and then step by step in the reasoning chain of thought way it is telling us what has happened with all the denotions and stuff there you go and then this is what i was after the qualitative explanation small orbital and much smaller mass very nice and then it is talking about reduction in mass and this is the final answer with proper backing of all the qualitative explanation so all in all very comprehensive top-notch answer in the next prompt i am testing its multilinguality and it is quite a hard one so what i am asking here it to do is to just assume the role of this unesco a linguist who is working on a project and it needs to focus on syntactical structures so it is checking advanced paleographic skills like interpreting ancient scripts and transcriptions it also need to have deep classical language proficiency to understand nuanced classical Chinese philosophy and its expressions as you can see in this prompt. Plus it should also have some high level uh, culturally aware, cultural awareness so that it could create some natural equivalent between Arabic and Russian and then it should do some cross linguist an analysis as mentioned in this prompt. So let's see what it can do. I'm not expecting it to the Uyghur language, but let's see if it can do that. And if you are that language speaker, please also confirm. Thinking looks quite good. And yep. Already I can tell it is doing well in Arabic and all that stuff. I'm not sure about the response, so but please let me know what you think. Let's wait for it. Now it has done the thinking and then it is deciphering language. Some of the languages it has missed like the Uyghur one, which was expected. But other than then for Chinese, you know, Google Translate tells me it has done good. And then it is doing the cross language stuff, which is good. 
and then it is talking about arabic and stuff so if you are that language speaker please confirm <clears throat> also the russian one looks okay to me as per google translate but let me know of course it is quite literal and then it is talking about german analysis and then i think doing pretty well the bigger one looks a bit off because maybe i was unable to paste it properly it doesn't support that font and then it has created the tabular data and this is where open ai's weight models were even better they were also generating a lot better table but i think in a text format free flowing format this model is also not that bad let's do another multilinguality test so i am asking you to translate sometimes you just have to let go in various languages of the world so let's see what it comes up with and then i will uh, let you be the judge of the answer okay there you go you can see i wanted to show you this that model is now started to hallucinating so what it has done it has done various language translations but where it fails um, there is no fallback and then just model went into an infinite loop so make sure if you're building this multilingual application you take care of this thing so this is a translation please let me know in your respective language in the comments um, i think i would say it is average because i can read this bit and then i have checked few others in the google translate i think all in all for most languages it has picked up some words but it is not that uh, represent representative and semantically most of it is not good enough especially for the non-european languages and chinese looks okay by the way english looks okay some of the european languages look okay but other than that the, in some of the indian regional languages some african uh, southeastern languages they are not really there yet but let me know what do you think okay so let's try out one final one around coding so it is again quite a hard one i'm asking it to create me a fully functional 3d molecular chemistry lab simulator in a single html file using 3.js that includes core molecular engine then some real-time 3d molecular visualization physics-based uh, dynamics interactive molecule builder and that sort of stuff Let's see if it can build it. And then at the end, I'm also asking it to include some VR, AR stuff, which I'm not sure if it can do, but you know, let's test it out. Let's push the boundaries. So I will wait for it to finish. Meanwhile, it generates, we already have checked VRAM consumption, but sometimes it jumps. So let's check it again. Oh my goodness. So it is taking over 45 gig of VRAM in full mode and it is in front of you. Wow, I was not expecting it. It's good that we checked it out. Anyway, I will finish. Uh, you know, I will let it finish and then we will check it out. Sometime it doesn't display the output in this preview. So we will we will check it out in the uh, browser. And you know what? It has built something really good. So if I add the atom and then maybe I just select this um, chemical symbol or something. You see sodium. It has created this. If I go with K, it has done this it is uh, simulated some sort of a uh, lab and then you can keep adding the atoms you can build the benzene and it builds it and then you can select different carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and all that stuff quite easily and then you can keep building of course you can build on top of it but given the size of the model and the thing which is it has built and if i show you the code it also looks quite good there you go so it's all three dot chairs self-contained html file and then it has explained it and then educational side of it and then the tabular stuff how good is that it's production ready amazing so look um the only bummer was a bit of a vram consumption but given the quality of the model i think we can go with it and of course there are quantized versions you can even decrease um some of the param hyper parameters too uh, just play around with bit of a lesser VRAM. But this is where things are. I also want to introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are iGent. iGent is the world's first multi agent workforce desktop application, empowering you to build, manage, and deploy a custom AI workforce that can turn your most complex workflows into automated tasks. And you can find the link in video description.
प्लीज लाइक द वीडियो एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल एस दैट हेल्प्स अ लॉट थैंक यू फॉर ऑल द सपोर्ट